Sometimes they're for enjoying the beauty. Other times are for having fun. Welcome to the Washtenaw County Parks. With a combination of over 30 parks and nature preserves revealing pristine treasures, many trails for bikers and hikers to go from border to border, and a variety of parks that offer recreation opportunities to enliven the spirit. Join us in discovering the wonders of Washtenaw County Parks. Think about the, uh, what the park system was before 1972. What, what was it when, when, when you got involved? Well, there was no park system. The, what we had essentially was um, the road commission had little roadside parks. And the purpose of those really was not park land or preserving land. It was to preserve gravel and sand so that they would have it available when they needed it. And so we thought we needed something between city parks, which are smaller, and regional parks, which are very large, and you have something in order to preserve land, preserve facilities, and to have some active recreation for people around the county. Uh, in, in those early years, uh, it was uh, several things were important. Number one, it was important that we have uh, a good, passionate uh, commission that understood uh, the policy uh, development and implications for parks. Secondly, it was important to bring on an executive director that understood the birthing of a parks system. The thing is, he was from a county in New York that had a good park system. He had been parks director and then he was historical facilities director. And he wanted to change, he wanted to move here, and he was getting a little older. And so he agreed to come to Washtenaw County for the pay we offered him. And he had skills that you really needed because he could really get along with people. He was very, very good at looking at not just short term, but long term. And he worked diligently to help us follow the um, plan and, and do what the taxpayers of Washtenaw County wanted us to do. We're sitting at Parker Mill and that's one of the things the taxpayers wanted us to do. They believed in restoration. Uh, they liked the trail system, which our current director has been so wonderful at advancing for all of the county. The border to border trail goes by my house and I love it. I can't believe all of the people using it. So the 70s was really about development of, of a park system. How did, how did that begin and what did it lead to? The planning and surveying of interest of the county residents has played a major role in the vision and design of what this commission has undertaken. We wanted to have citizen involvement in that and we had uh, decided to uh, launch a countywide survey and there was a vehicle for doing this through uh, a course that was being taught during the summer months at the Institute for Social Research. So we had, for a relatively low cost, a whole class of uh, graduate students design and administer uh, a survey and analyze the data and prepare a report for us. Number one on those early surveys was water recreation. Number two was walking trails. So we, uh, we were looking around for land that uh, would be available to us and access to water and clearly Independence Lake was one of those locations. It, was, it belonged to Joe Edwards, the Edwards Publishing Company. And Joe Edwards used it for his employees. This, it was actually pretty primitive, but it was a nice piece of land and it had a lot of natural areas to it. And that's actually the park that my grandson now loves the most. He goes to all their date programs and stuff. It was Mary Lou Murray who originally went to the county board as a county commissioner and thought to have a millage placed on the ballot for county parks. And that was way back in 1976 and the millage has been approved every 10 years since. And it has enabled the Parks Commission to plan facilities and develop them 
and to look to the future, something they couldn't do if that, if that commitment to the millage was not there. If we didn't know how many dollars were coming in next year, we couldn't be looking at these beautiful pieces of land to purchase. And, and we couldn't be planning these facilities that are gonna serve uh, future generations. Before Social Security and other safety net programs, uh, the safety net was the county poor farm. And uh, people who were indigent and unable to support themselves and didn't have family to support them could come to the county for help. And they were housed here at, at the county farm. And the county farm was farmed to raise the food and so, so forth that would feed these people. Uh, eventually, there was a hospital built on the site I think probably dating back to something like 1919. And at one point, St. Joe's Hospital was down not too far from the other hospital. And St. Joe's was looking for a place where they could build a new facility. So the argument was, well, let's do something with that property. We can use it for economic development. We can use it to build St. Joe's Hospital. We can use it for a great public purpose. And Mary Lou, Murray coming from this area, representing this part of the county, really saw the vision of what County Farm Park could be 10, 20, 30, 40 years from now. That green space somewhere between Ann Arbor and Ypsilanti, before you get to the kind of the strung out retail on Washtenaw, and a place where families could come uh, where folks could walk, where folks could run, ultimately to have the rec center here. It could really be, yes, a use of public land that was very significant and a great investment in the community. And uh, not everyone saw that. Shortly after I was elected in 1971 to city council, one of my constituents called up and wanted to have a place where they could grow a victory garden. She wanted to do it on public property. I arranged that we'd have a meeting with George Hours, who was our city parks director at the time. He suggested that we look at uh, the zoning map and for things that were labeled PL, public land. She got the idea, Suzanne Drake, that uh, we should do this citywide. And Instead of simply becoming a victory garden, uh, she decided that we should have gardens all over the city where people can do this. And, and she, the next year, found eight different sites, including County Farm, uh, where g gardens were established. It was quite a successful thing, and its 40-year anniversary is this year. Mallets Creek drains about 40% of urban Ann Arbor, and about 15 or so years ago, we got a mandate from the Department of Environmental Quality. We needed to improve habitat and to reduce the pollution that Mallets Creek is delivering downstream to the Huron River. County Farm is a tributary into Mallets Creek. We've had a great opportunity with Parks as just a terrific partner to restore that stream channel to create a wet meadow that's going to hold storm water and release it gradually, protecting the stream channel. And um, we're also creating what I think is a real amenity for the park. This has been a working family mill for well over 100 years before we purchased it. Farmers would line up on Getty's Road when it was a dirt road with their um, wagons filled with grain to be ground into flour. They made pancake flour here. It allows our naturalists to demonstrate how the grinding worked. Farmers would grow these grains and um, when it was ready to harvest, take out of their field, they bring it to this building called a grist mill because they want to change it into food that's easier for us to eat. In order to turn this into flour, the first step is to do what's called shelling. The corn that you toss down gets changed. It gets turned into flour and um, the big pieces that you see here. When we developed Parker Mill, we wanted to give the public an opportunity to see some of the more fragile natural areas and to appreciate 
these resources, but not to undermine their quality. So we put in a boardwalk system that's elevated above the wetland areas, and this gives the public full access to a beautiful natural area with Fleming Creek running alongside of many of the boardwalk paths and a, a great system of interpretive signage that explains to folks what's going on here and what the resources that we've protected are all about. Well, we decided that it would be good to develop a kind of water recreation uh, that really didn't exist in the state of Michigan, and that was an all-inclusive water park, which would include uh, a wave pool, water slides, a water playground, all of this kind of thing brought together in one package. It is very clear, treated water, and you have many lifeguards around, and you can see the bottom of the pool, and consequently, parents like that, especially if you have smaller children. I, I brought my kids here, I brought my grandkids here, and now I'm in the process of bringing my great-grandkids here. I've got great-grandkids that love to come and get in this water. You couldn't have a better day than to come out here on a Saturday or a Sunday and, and enjoy it with your great-grandkids. You get out here, park your car, and go for a walk. We've got a tree house out here. You can come out and get in the tree house, get up in it and sit down and and kind of enjoy yourself. This is what you call getting back to nature. There are two other um, interesting activities there. One is a fishing pond, and the second area was developed into a Frisbee golf course. Disc golf really didn't exist in Washtenaw County before 1986, and through a suggestion that was made to the County Parks and Recreation Commission, a nine-hole disc golf course was established at Rolling Hills County Park. And it was the first disc golf course in Washtenaw County. It was extremely well received. It still is very popular. And over the years, we've added to that. We now have 18 holes at Rolling Hills. We have an 18 hole permanent disc golf installation at Independence Lake uh, County Park called the Red Hawk Course, which we're very, very proud of. We've opened the new mountain bike trails and the new park trails for the park expansion. This is a project that's been ongoing for some years, uh, at least from the Michigan Mountain Biking Association's point of view. We, over the last two years, we've built three miles of single track mountain bike trail with plans for about two more miles uh, in this year. Um, we have completed an accessible playground, uh, which won a national award for us at Rolling Hills County Park last year. As part of our operational scheme and as part of our development plans, is to do things that attract more families, that provide more opportunities for a, a broad range of age groups in county parks. It was quite obvious that our population was getting older and we needed facilities to accommodate the recreational needs of seniors. And in discussing this with the Parks Commission, it was decided that maybe what we needed to do was build a recreation center which was designed around the needs of seniors. And uh, with that in mind and with the water park in mind, the Parks Commission uh, decided to ask the citizens of the county for an additional one quarter mill. And we told the folks that if they would uh, adopt that mill, that we would build a water park and a recreation center. They adopted it, and two years later, we had a recreation center and a water park built. We originally built that facility to accommodate our senior population, uh, and many of the uh, elements in it were designed for that. But what happened was, we knew there was a demand, but we had no idea that so many non-seniors wanted the activities of recreation center. And consequently, from the day we opened the front door, to the Murray Lou Murray Recreation Center. To this day, it is just stacked with people. I remember the groundbreaking event. Uh, there was a picture taken and we had the shovel and we were breaking the ground. And I think we were doing more than breaking just that ground. We, we had now a project that was going to be something that the community is going to use and it's gonna help us further our efforts in the commission to go on to more adventures. 
And the response from our residents was unbelievable. They were so enthusiastic about coming to the center. We knew that there was a need for a golf course in the county uh, that would serve uh, a whole another group of people that we were not serving uh, recreationally. So I live in Chelsea and uh, one day I was driving down the road and I came by this piece of property we're sitting on right now and it was for sale. So I went and uh, talked to them and asked them if they'd be interested in selling this piece of land. I knew it was going to be expensive because it was located right on M52, I-94, right in the heart of Chelsea. And by leveraging state funds and by convincing those folks to give us a large piece of it as a gift, which they then could write off their capital gains taxes, we were able to acquire this piece of land, which was 232 acres, uh, for about $2,000 an acre, which was way under the, uh, the assessed value. In the 1920s, Henry Ford visited the countryside in search of a new small manufacturing plant. He set his sights on Sharon Grist Mill, which was located next to the sawmill. Fascinated by the old sawmill, Ford captured mill owner George Kirkwood, sawing timbers before the mill was dismantled in the early 1930s. The sawmill was powered by the churning waters of the River Raisin. Energy from the water was captured to turn the blades of a 48-inch turbine. The turbine is located underwater, so it cannot be seen. The turbine was connected to a shaft, which in turn was attached to a series of belts, gears, and wheels, providing power to operate the mill. This is Mr. George Kirkwood. He operated both the saw and grist mill after his father passed away in 1900 until milling operations ended in the late 1920s. Here Mr. Kirkwood is performing a task he did often, cleaning sawdust from the mill gears. Sharon Mills is a little mill that's located south of Chelsea down by Manchester. Uh, it was built, built way back in the 1800s and then uh, in the early 1900s, Henry Ford bought it, developed a little factory there. They made uh, starters and cigarette lighters. Over the years, it had gone through a number of uses. And the last uh, use before we acquired it, it was a winery. We uh, hired an architect that was an expert in historic preservation, and uh, we ended up building that park, which is just a, a very lovely facility today. My oldest daughter selected this park for a wedding a couple years ago in mid-September. Any choice that the bride and groom make for their ceremony and their dinner fits just right into that whole mill area. I think everybody should think about that for all kinds of celebrations, not just weddings, but anniversaries, small parties, um, maybe even a birthday. I think it's something that a lot of people could use if they only knew it was out there. Roland, I know probably your, your biggest passion is helping kids. Uh, what kinds of things have you experienced? I'm really interested in kids and uh, how they're growing up today, and I think they need all the help they can get. And I think it's our obligation as adults to do what we can for them. The way you see kids at the water park when they go down the slide, or if they're frisbee golf with the teenagers, it's something they can do that doesn't cost a lot of money, and they need activity outside nowadays, and I think we, we supply that in a number of ways at the County Parks and Recs. Geocaching is a, a treasure hunt with uh, GPS systems. Uh, you get on the computer and get the, uh, the coordinates, and a, a GPS system will take you to uh, a treasure somewhere. They can be as big as uh, a box with different little toys in them, and they can also be as small as what they call a micro which is about as big as the tip of your baby finger. The day camps, I stop and talk to the youth in the day camps and the parents love it. It gets the kids outside, wears the kids out in the summer, and uh, it's just another service that uh, we provide for the community.
We could not afford to do things without partners and it seems to be working great. The dog park, when I stop and talk to the residents in the dog park, they love it. The skateboard park is another uh, segment of the population I feel that we need to address and now we are addressing that because there's a lot of youth out there that skateboard but they're doing it on the street and it's not very safe. What were the concerns and frustrations that uh, led to the establishment of that program and the approval of that millage? There has been a pattern of development, uh, certainly in Washtenaw County and elsewhere, that cities continue to expand out into rural areas, that land is, is divided into smaller and smaller parcels, and open space is lost. It is a loss for the public in terms of the opportunity to enjoy undeveloped areas and it also is a loss of uh, farmland and just general open space. In this particular case there was an interest in preserving what a lot of people think is part of the character of Washtenaw County and that is these unique natural areas. The open woods, the chance to visit an area that is still in a condition certainly before anybody goes in and cuts it up and, and makes it uh, available for development. And in 1998 uh, the Board of Commissioners agreed to put a ballot proposal, uh, a land preservation proposal on the ballot that year and it was for farmland and open space and it was defeated. It was perceived as something that was intended to thwart development and so the whole effort was sort of repackaged and focused just on open space, on natural areas and it was put on the ballot in November of 2000 and I think it passed with about a 64 percent approval rating and over the last 10 years we have made somewhere in the area of 38 purchases which now comprise about 22 preserves and in November of 2010 the the ballot was renewed for an additional 10 years so it's been a, a very successful program. Before this program was established uh, Washtenaw County Parks and Recreation Commission managed roughly 1100 acres and through the acquisition of the preserves through this program and expansion of the traditional parks program. Washtenaw County Parks is now responsible for over 4,500 acres. Um, it has been an extremely successful, well-received program, and I say that because of the feedback that we get from the public that visits the preserves. Our naturalists do conduct a number of programs periodically at these preserves and at the other parks, and when the public experiences those programs and then we get the feedback, they talk about how much they appreciate that opportunity to be in the field, to see a preserve like the one that we're in today, and to have it explained, to, to learn about the plant types, the animal types, how the habitat fosters those plants and animals, and how they get a chance to experience that. And that experience would not exist if it hadn't been for this program. The Goodrich Preserve in uh, Annaberg Township is, is an odd story. When we look at properties, we're always interested in a significant piece of land. It, it takes a certain amount of acreage to provide real effective habitat. The Goodrich Preserve started out as an 11 acre piece that was nominated by the property owners. And you wouldn't necessarily think that that would be a great opportunity, but in this case it was. The Goodrich Preserve was located such that it provided access to an adjacent piece of property that was owned and protected by the University of Michigan, but didn't have a public access opportunity at that point. So the purchase of the Goodrich Preserve, while it was only 11 acres, provided an access point that allowed the public and the university much more convenient access to what is called Horner McLaughlin Woods. And it has also fostered interest in future collaboration. Right now we're waiting on the chance to, uh, to actually implement a grant that has been awarded to Washtenaw County Parks from the Michigan Natural Resources Trust Fund that grant would allow us to add another 54 acres to this and in turn connect to a city-owned property that is adjacent to that, which is roughly 85 acres. In total, if we're able to complete all this, we'll have a 275-acre contiguous preserve under multiple ownerships, multiple stewardships, but all in a partnership for care, use, management into the future. And it all started in terms of the public's access to it with an 11 acre purchase that established the Goodrich Preserve. One of the real successes of the Natural Areas Preservation Program has been the collaboration and the partnerships. We've worked with Legacy Land Conservancy, Southeast Michigan Land Conservancies, and other uh, like-minded organizations 
But beyond that, we've worked with other municipalities. The property we're in today, Sio Woods Preserve, was the result of a collaborative purchase between our program, Sio Township's Land Preservation Program, and the Ann Arbor Greenbelt Program. Sio Township, Superior Township, Ann Arbor Township, have all been partners on protection of uh, various properties. Um, City of Ann Arbor Greenbelt Program has been a tremendous partner. I think one of the successful programs has been the park's leadership on border-to-border -border trails. What, what has that leadership meant uh, in our community? We want to take the lead on constructing the non-motorized trail network, that higher functioning non-motorized trail network that would be comparable to a, a city major county primary road network. And probably the most appealing and most immediate uh, opportunity to do that was along here on River Drive. It's, always been one of those more popular destinations for bikers and so we, we packaged it up as the border to border trail from Portage Lake and Dexter Township to Ford Lake and Ypsilanti Township and we've been working on it for 10 years now. We've got uh, quite a few key segments built and not everything was, was something that we did. You, know, you go through the city of Ann Arbor and we've actually sort of piggybacked on part of their trail network and they've allowed us to, to post our border to border sign. It's slowly becoming a continuous route. People always talk about you know, how long it takes to travel from one place or the other, and you know, we typically calculate that you know, if you're riding a bike, you can, at a reasonable pace, cover 13 miles an hour. You know, if you're walking, it's about, about three miles an hour. Border to border on Washtenaw County is about 36 miles, so in, in three hours, you should be able to you know, go from one side of the county to the other. It is a chance for families to recreate together on a trail that will not be burdened by its contact with vehicles. Three years ago we started another program called Connecting Communities and it's essentially a grant program that we set up to help local communities fund their trail projects to build those connectors. When you've got an opportunity that the public has approved millages that provide you with funds to use for a particular purpose it would be very easy and perhaps understandable to be very jealous of those funds. The Connecting Communities initiative is exactly the opposite. Having received the funding from the millages, the commission elected to turn around and give it away. So Connecting Communities is a program that through contact with local communities provides grants for the construction of non-motorized trails within Washtenaw County. And in, there are a number of really crazy aspects to that program. First of all, again, they're giving away the money that somebody's given to them and that they could quite rightfully just keep for their own use. And then it funds trails that are developed on properties that aren't owned by Washtenaw County Parks. So they're allowing somebody else to develop a recreational facility on their own land that, other than a small sign, will never be credited to Washtenaw County. And that's done because the commission understands that may be the best or the greatest public good. And so a, a collection or a network of non-motorized trails is beginning to grow within Washtenaw County, serving the needs of these communities. And so a community like Northfield Township up near Whitmore Lake that applied for a Connecting Communities grant has now constructed a trail along Barker Road connecting one of their schools with the population center in Whitmore Lake, providing a safe route to school, a wonderful recreation opportunity, and really a facility that would not have been built by Northfield Township if it hadn't gotten the help from Washtenaw County Parks. I tried to walk over to my grandson's house in the Waterway subdivision, which, which is about a half hour, 45 minute walk. And before the trail, I couldn't do it safely. So today with the trail, I can either walk or take my bike. I'm thankful for the partnership of the Washtenaw County Parks and Recs and my township Pittsfield for partnering in this venture. At present, a large segment is being constructed in the northwest portion of the county up near the village of Dexter, connecting Hudson Mills Metro Park to the village of Dexter and from there downriver to Dexter Huron Metro Park um, and working into a network of trails that the village is working on also. So, you know, we, we laugh about the idea that the village of Dexter is about to become the world hub of non-motorized uh, transportation. 
Um, that may be a stretch, but it certainly is true that there will be terrific opportunities and a network of trails that'll consist of many, many miles that'll be focused within the village and just a great opportunity for people to enjoy the river uh, and other environments. What it speaks to is a commitment on the part of the community to non-motorized opportunities. And you know, you, you think about how a community considers itself or the character that a community uh, places you know, in their own minds about themselves. Washtenaw County has developed an impression of themselves that they are committed to non-motorized recreation, to non-motorized transportation. Uh, it's become part of the community. It has the potential to really be transformational for a community. Um, recreation is, is all about quality of life. It's all about you know, making Washtenaw County, making Dexter, Ypsilanti, wherever you're at, you know, a desirable place to live and to raise a family. I do believe that uh, the contribution that the County Parks and Recreation Commission has made to the quality of life in Washtenaw County is very, very significant. Uh, the system of traditional parks and now the new system of nature preserves really do provide a a very significant attraction to people that might be interested in living in Washtenaw County, that might be interested in locating a business within Washtenaw County, knowing that those opportunities exist, knowing that they'll be cared for and that will continue to exist in the future, I think is really important. Much like people talk about school systems, they talk about park systems as sort of a foundation of a community and why you might consider it a good place to be.